And to get to one more not so cheery topic, that is the climate. I'm sure a number of you followed the happenings in Kentucky recently with massive floods and, and storms and weather events. This is by Monica Garrett. It's in CNN. Flood ravaged eastern Kentucky braces for more rain and flash flooding. Oh, I'm sorry. The other artist on this is Peyton Major. Those still recovering from the deadly floods just a week ago in eastern Kentucky find themselves under threat from more heavy rain and flash flooding. Quote, We've got river conditions right now that we don't typically see prolonged at this time of year over a large area where it just makes us more susceptible to flooding than we would normally be at this time of year. Hal Klingenberg, lead forecaster at the National Weather Service in Jackson, Kentucky, told CNN Friday morning. Quote, for most areas, we're looking at an inch and a half to two inches of rain to occur in a relatively short time within one to three hours to start causing significant problems once again, Klingenberg, Klingenberg said. Storms on Friday will be capable of producing very heavy rainfall rates, prompting the Weather Prediction Center to issue a slight risk level of excessive rainfall for the Tennessee and Ohio valleys into the mid-Atlantic. For portions of Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia, WPC says Friday is more of a higher-end slight risk with isolated to scattered flash flooding likely, but less confidence on a more widespread organized risk. Klingenberg, who had several co-workers directly impacted by the devastating flood, said, You tend to pay a lot closer attention once you've been hurt and once you've been hit by something like a natural disaster. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir gave an update on Friday, the eighth day of flooding in the state, confirming that the death toll of 37 across five counties has not increased. Quote, while we have thousands that lost their home that we need to stabilize, steady progress is being made and real significant progress, especially over the last eight days, he said. The governor said officials were focused on conducting wellness checks Friday due to concerns about slow-moving thunderstorms that could lead to heavy rainfall on Saturday. He added that nine cooling centers remain open in different counties as heat conditions are expected to increase after the storm. So they get hit with cat catastrophic flooding, and it looks like they're going to get hit with a whole bunch more storms here uh, this coming week, culminating on Friday. My heart goes out to those in Kentucky dealing with this. Once again, you guys, these extreme weather events becoming much more, more common and more frequent and more devastating, more extreme as uh, we accelerate through and into the climate crisis. We have one more story about the climate here. This is about Europe. It's in The Guardian. It's by John Henley. The new normal, how Europe is being hit by a climate-driven drought crisis. Water shortages across the continent from France through Italy, Spain, and beyond are creating a critical situation. Europe's most severe drought in decades is hitting homes, factories, farmers, and freight across the continent. As experts warn, uh, drier winters and searing summers fueled by global heating mean water shortages will become the new normal. The EU European Drought Observatory has calculated that 45% of the bloc's territory was under drought warning by mid-July, with 15% already on red alert, prompting the European Commission to warn of a critical situation in multiple regions. Conditions have deteriorated since is, as repeated heat waves roll across the continent. In France, the Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne last week it, uh, activated a crisis unit to tackle a drought made Medio France described as the country's worst, re worst since records began in 1958. More than 100 French municipalities have no running drinking water and are being supplied by truck. Green Transition Minister Christophe Bechu, I apologize if I butchered that said, adding, we are, going to get to, we are going to get used to episodes of this type. Adaptation is no longer an option. It's an obligation. With surface soil humidity the lowest ever recorded in July rainfall, 85% lower than usual, water restrictions, including house pipe and irrigation bans, are in place in 93 of the country's 96 mainland departments, with 62 classified as in crisis. You guys can see a map here showing rainfall deficits and drought warnings and alerts. So all over Europe. Um, these climate emergency, the climate emergency that, you know, we're seeing in the form of extreme weather events and droughts and fires and floods and melting ice caps and increased temperatures in the water and in the air, melting permafrost, you know, uh, we're seeing it in all sorts of areas, wildlife dying off, you know, uh, so many species hitting extin extinction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's just catastrophic to see, and the fact that 
The main topic today was a grossly inadequate bill that is nonetheless historic in, in comparison to the lack of action, uh, not just on behalf of this country, but on behalf of the world to address this climate crisis. It's just, it's quite sad. It's, um, I really don't know how to put any sort of positive spin on this story. You guys were accelerating into a devastating crisis that is going to impact all of us and all of our loved ones and all of our communities. Uh, and of course, as with almost every issue in this country, disproportionately those in the poor and working class. So uh, we need to take direct, a direct action to address this. We're not going to get any help from the elected officials who we, uh, who we, you know, who we elect to address these issues. They've demonstrated that um, the most that we're going to get from them is the most mediocre and inadequate bills that are paired with huge handouts to big gas and big oil and private equity and corporations. So they are not going to save us. They are not even going to try. They are not even going to mitigate the damage. We need to take this upon ourselves with direct action. Um, and even then, we're at best mitigating the damage here. We're, uh, we are past the point of no return in so many different respects. So. I urge you all to take the climate very seriously. I urge you all to not only pressure the politicians that represent you to do more about it, but to do more yourself. Um, and, you know, that's all I can really say about it at this point. We are in a crisis, and we're all going to be dealing with that crisis for the foreseeable future. So 